Hey everybody, welcome back, and this is the values subsection. Imagine a sea of bits, an ocean of them. A typical modern computer has more than 30 billion bits in its volatile data storage, working memory. Uh, Non-volatile storage, the hard disk or equivalent, tends to have yet a few orders of magnitude more. Uh, you might also want to think of that as like if you say I have an X gigabyte or giga, a X gigabyte computer, they're usually talking about memory or uh, what we call that, the hard disk or equivalent, and then uh, gigs of RAM, that's going to be working memory. Now there is a little bit of like crossplay between those with more modern uh, memory systems. However, for now, that's really all you need to know. There's two different kinds of memory. One is volatile, one is non-volatile. The non-volatile, uh, which is to say the hard disk or equivalent, tends to have way more capacity than the volatile data storage, which is things more like RAM, like what your computer do can do at like a fast twitch. Um, think about it as things that you remember, uh, you know, like directions that you're going to forget really quickly versus like directions to your significant other or like your family's house. If you're just learning a route one time, you're probably going to keep it in working memory. If you're learning something you know, permanently, it tends to get transferred to your hard disk. Uh, but again, as this book mentioned, we probably shouldn't do a ton of uh, metaphors for computers just because it's not really, it's not an apt situation for them. But anyway, to be able to work with such quantities of bits without getting lost, we must separate them into chunks that represent pieces of information. In a JavaScript environment, those chunks are called values. And as I said, values is one of these italicized words, um, probably going to be showing up in our, there you go, value, a chunk of information. So our vocab list is still complete. Though all values are made of bits, they play different roles. Every value has a type that determines its role. Some values are numbers, some values are pieces of text, some values are functions, and so on. To create a value, you must merely invoke its name. This is convenient. You don't have to gather building material for your values or pay for them. You just call for one and whoosh, you have it. They are not really created from thin air, of course. Every value has to be stored somewhere, and if you want to use a gigantic amount of them at the same time, you might run out of memory. Fortunately, this is a problem only if you need all of them simultaneously. As soon as you no longer use a value, it will dissipate, leaving behind its bits to be recycled as building material for the next generation of values. This chapter introduces the atomic elements of JavaScript programs, that is, the symbol, value types, and the operators that can act on such values. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.